Welcome back. With us now is Danny Bakewell, senior founder of the civil rights group, The Brotherhood Crusade. He's also the publisher of the Los Angeles Sentinel newspaper and chairman emeritus of the National Black Publishers Association. So, uh, Mr. Bakewell, thanks for taking the time. You want to change state law as it relates to protections for police officers, the so-called Peace Officers Bill of Rights. Why? We want police, we need police, we think they're essential, but we need police that respect and, and are there to protect and serve, not misuse and abuse. Unfortunately, to date, we've gotten more misuse and abuse. There are many, many great police officers, and we work closely with the ones who, in fact, are demonstrating that they're there to be partners with the community. But if we want systemic change that is going to completely redo the way police officers are held accountable, we have got to focus on the Police Bill of Rights, which is the, the credo by the union of the police department. They rule with an iron fist because they have gotten legislation from Sacramento, which makes it California law that says certain things that they have rights about that you and I don't have rights about. If you, Danny Bakewell and Conan shot somebody today, we'd immediately be arrested, taken down to the precinct or to the headquarters and interrogated. They send them, take them off active duty, they send them home, they with pay, they get to get their stories together. A perfect example was there was a black man in California. We didn't need to wait for George Floyd. He was in a bathhouse in Hollywood. He was swearing and, you know, felt he was being mistreated. They called the police, a man and a woman. They went there. They, in fact, challenged him. He wouldn't come out. They went in, and they shot him. The man was naked. The man had no, no gun. It was so over the top. The chief recommended after review that the police officers be fired. The police review board within the department recommended that what they did was within policy and they're back on the force. Why the hell do we have a chief? If, if we can't live by what he says, that's the other kinds of things that need to be amended. Right, but to those who say, listen, police officers deserve an accommodation because of the nature of their work. The Police Officers' Bill of Rights ensures they are treated fairly and not subject to baseless accusations. That is, that is bull crap. They have a shield because of the California Bill of, I mean, the Police Bill of Rights. I have been told this by Bratton. I've been told this. By, by Mike, I've been told this by all of the chiefs, Bernard Parks, etc., that if, in fact, you fire somebody and you don't follow the, the police bill of rights, they will be reinstated, they'll get all of their back pay, and they'll get a handsome payout from the city of Los Angeles. So the, the decks are stacked against us. If you read the California Bill of Rights, if anybody in California reads it, Here's what is so malignant about it. It gives them rights that we don't have as citizens. Why should that be? Danny Bakewell, Sr., founder of the Brotherhood Crusade, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Conan. I appreciate it. Now with us is Mike Raines, one of the leading attorneys in the state who represents peace officers accused of wrongdoing. He's also a former Santa Monica police officer. So, Mr. Raines, from your viewpoint, what is the purpose of the Peace Officers' Bill of Rights? The bill was enacted to prevent arbitrary and abusive treatment of police officers. It's right there in the legislative history of this law because officers used to be mistreated with they were accused of misconduct. They were brought into interviews. The interviewers were abusive. They were threatening. Uh, officers were denied any form of uh, legal rights, including representation. So uh, that's why this law was enacted in 1977. So it's been in existence for 43 years. The rights in POVAR, as we call it, uh, are rights that many, many other employees have or under, under case law, uh, procedural due process rights, rights to be informed of the nature of the investigation before they're interviewed, so they aren't sandbagged about allegations, 
rights to request representation and receive representation if they could suffer punishment. Uh, those are the rights afforded under POBAR. And I might add, firefighters in California have almost an identical set of rights. Right, but we're not talking about teachers or firefighters. These are officers of the law who have a gun and a badge. And in the case of a shooting, routinely they're allowed to go home, not talk with it about it with investigators for days. You and I would not be accorded that accommodation. Why do they? The only time that we see uh, what you would call a quote unquote cooling off period uh, would, would relate to officer-involved shootings. And it's not really a cooling off period. It's a memory consolidation period because of the body of science that says the memory improves on a traumatic event after 36 to 48 hours. That is generally a practice uh, it's not a policy. It's a practice that many, many uh, DA's offices throughout the state of California are now employing an officer involved shootings to uh, allow the officer's memory of an event in a traumatic event to uh, become better and more accurately relate the facts. That's why they're doing it. We're seeing that, you know, it's still not probably the norm. The norm on officer involved shootings is that most. DA's offices still want that officer who uh, used lethal force to be interviewed right away. But there, because of the body of science, uh, many offices are now saying, let's do the formal interview in anywhere from 36 to 48 hours. And the officers, of course, are. Listen, right now, police investigate police, and it's mostly in secret. In this age of calls to defund police agencies, is there any consideration for making departments more transparent? Oh, I think everybody's accepting the fact that the public would like more transparency in policing. And I don't think the police associations, the unions, nor we as their lawyers, are against something that uh, balances this transparency, which is a public right, to the safety and the security of a police officer. You know, because they use force, because they have this unique power given to no other employee, if an officer does uh, have to make that terrible, terrible decision uh, to take someone's life, I can't tell you how many cases where officers have been threatened, uh, their lives have been threatened, their families have been threatened. We cannot allow uh, the safety of these officers to be jeopardized by the cries of, you know, transparency. So attorney Michael Raines, who represents peace officers in both civil and criminal litigation, thank you for taking the time. Thank you very much, Conan. Thanks for the opportunity. In a moment, the effort at bringing the question of affirmative action back before voters when we return.